Hi, this is Amin and in this video I'm going to talk about Mobility Handover and A3 event uh, which are important to talk. We've covered some topics about LT so far and now it is time to talk about these. Uh, so let's go to a diagram to have better understanding of the situation. First, imagine a U is here and uh, ENLB number one or basis station number one, whatever you call it, is uh, serving the ENLB. But uh, the, it's serving the UF, sorry. But the thing is that uh, U is a mobile device and it can change its place. So maybe it goes here towards this border. And as the distance between a U and an inad B, an antenna, increases, the power will decrease. And as a power, received a power uh, from the serving inad B decreases, power from a different inad B will increase. If you want to take a look at the receive signal level, uh, theoretically, there are these uh, smooth lines. But the point is that uh, these blue lines uh, are depicting the real situation because they're, uh, they're going to have some fluctuations. Anyway, so one of them decreases, one of them increases, and they're going to cross each other at the, at the specific place. And this specific place, uh, maybe exactly it is the border. Of two different cells, uh, somehow it uh, causes uh, confusion between I don't know engineers, students, and th this is the thing that imagine you are at the border, you are at the place that the that two lines are crossed each other, and maybe you uh, maybe you uh, decide to go further, maybe you decide to go back, and if you have handover at that specific place, this is the point that maybe you go back and forth. And there will be lots of handovers in the system, and uh, this is the thing that we, uh, which will add lots of loads and lots of handovers, lots of loads to the ENLBs and the MMEs. So, from that point, there is a specific number we call that offset. From that point, when the UE passes the uh, that threshold uh, plus that offset, it uh, goes through the handover. So we call that handover margin and it's time to trigger. This is the place. So when UE goes further from that place, handover will happen. And we know that uh, in the LT network, unlike previous networks, ENLBs are uh, connected to each other via X2 interface. And these uh, communication between two ENLBs, I mean the serving and the target, or uh, we can call them all the new, uh, will be uh, via X2 interface and uh, in a case that they are not connected to each other via X2 due to some geographical things in the uh, uh, cell configurations uh, they're going to communicate each other via S1 interface we know that we have S1 MME for controlling the stuff and S1U for user plane that uh, InAdbiz use uh, them to communicate to the MME or to the core and it, at this uh, scenario, they're going to use S1 MME to do the handover, which we call it S1 handover. And when, we, uh, when they use X2 for the handover, we call it X2 handover. For the sake of simplicity, we're going to uh, think of X2 handover. And let's see the procedure step by step. Okay, we're here at the UE. And there is a message from the serving in be towards the UE, we call that measurement procedure. And you say, hey, do some sort of measurements for me. And the UE starts to do the uh, measurements and uh, at first acknowledge, uh, acknowledges the message and says, okay, I'm going to do the uh, measurements and uh, sends the reports. When uh, ENLB, the serving ENLB, uh, when it realizes that UE uh, can have another connection, or maybe UE uh, passes that threshold to the handover decision. And it sends a request towards a new NIB or target NIB. We call that a handover request. So it sends a, a handover request towards the new NIB. And the new NIB uh, will go in the state of admission control and think of that. Okay, I'm going to do it. I'm going to accept the handover. Uh, do, I, do I have uh, sufficient resources for that? Uh, is this UE uh, going to, I don't know, use lots of downlink and I'm going to allocate lots of bandwidth to that? These are the questions or these are the things that the target you know, is going to think of that and uh, maybe reject. And when it accepts, 
sends a handover a request acknowledge and it goes towards i mean the serving in adb for what's that message towards the ui and that message uh consists of uh, the frequency slide the scheduling whatsoever you think it is important to have the connection to the new in adb sends all of them to the ui and you try to detach from the serving cell and make the RRC connection, I mean the R random access. If you want to know about them, there's a video on the channel. I'll talk about them thoroughly. Anyway, so do the things and do the RRC connection. In the meanwhile, that uh, UE is going to do uh, to send the attach request towards the uh, target in IB. Uh, the serving in IB do a status transfer. What is a status transfer? Definition AR is here. I mean, whatever data has a not acknowledged yet, whatever, maybe you have a, I don't know, maybe you have an active connection, maybe you are using data. So whatever data using uh, by the UE and the previous or the serving in you know, is is uh, uh, actually was handling that, it forwards all of them towards the new in you know, B to the target in you know, B to cover the situation. So we call that data forwarding or status transfer. So after that, we have packet buffering from the cell and the new cell, the new uh, target in that will discover the things and the RRC connection reconfiguration complete. So everything is done. No, there is a part which is we call it behind the scene. As I told you, maybe the, I don't know, we have an active session, something like that. And this is the responsibility of ACE gateway. So ACE gateway, uh, keeps sending uh, the data towards the old inadb and this is a uh, responsibility of the new inadb to send path switch request towards the mme and say hey mme and now i have an active session now i have now a handover happened so the path which uh, was handling by ace gateway should come towards me and mme sends that uh, towards that ACE gateway and the same communication. So the downlink path switching the procedure will happen. And uh, uh, we call that a bearer modification or the S uh, gateway SGW will modify the bearer connection towards the new inner B and sends the packet towards the new inner B. And as the new inner B uh, received that message, we'll send a, another message to the uh, previous now it is not the serving uh, in a bit is the previous in a bit it will send a message towards the previous in advance and say, we call that the ue context release so it is the time to release whatever you had this is the whole concept of that i know that it is not very uh, maybe uh, logical or doesn't make sense just to think of diagrams so for that reason let's go to the x cow software to see the picture uh xcat software is a kind of software that can capture data uh, for the ue's i mean the data downlink and uplink things so let's go to the xcal and see the situation uh, this is uh, the data that captured this is the first situation we have rrc connection configuration if we take a look at this message here or here actually this is the message RRC connection reconfiguration. Uh, this is a cell number. Oh, oops, sorry, sorry. It should be here. This is the cell number 312, uh, which is the serving cell. And it sends a message towards the UE. If you can see, it's a downlink. And it means from inner B towards the UE. It is dedicated control channel. So it's a control channel and by cell number 312 to the UNC do the measurement configuration do the measurement configuration so do the measurement config and uh, how do for the cell id number 15 do with uh, cell id number 23 cell id number 31 151 and the rest of them and this number is uh, the fixed number that i told you it is the offset number minus 3d before this cell minus 3d before this cell for this cell minus one and do all of them for me to have a better uh decision for the handover and this is the thing that we call that a3 event so do the a3 event 
and do the RSRP and RSRQ. I mean the receive signal strength and the quality. Both of them are important. Just uh, if the receive signal and strength is uh, high, it's not important. Quality is important. And after that, there is an uplink dedicated control channel from the UE towards the MME towards the inner and said, okay, I'm going to do that. RRC connection reconfiguration complete. I'm going to do that and do the, do the all of the measurements. We can see measurements report, measurements report, I don't know, measurement, measurement. For example, if you take a look at this one, it is an uplink again, uh, control channel toward, uh, from the UE towards the inner B and say, hey, cell ID number uh, 312, which is the serving uh, inner B. These are the measurements that I've done. You see, this is the RSRP and this is the RSRQ. This is the power and this is the quality of these uh, inner Bs or these cells. And the UE keep on doing, keep on doing, keep on doing, you know, it did lots of things and finally this is the final one i'm going to show you i say hey cell id number 312 which is the serving in b this is the last uh, report that i'm giving to you that uh, actually ue does not know this is the last report we know that because because we are looking at that here but anyway this is the report that uh, we have this power and this quality from cell id number 20 Three. And uh, once the UE, once the inner B receives a message and uh, feel that and see that the UE is, is, is going to pass or is passing the threshold, send another. It sends another message. Uh, look, this is the previous. Still, uh, still we are the serving. No. It uh, sends a message uh, towards the UE. It is RRC, conf uh, RRC connection reconfiguration and it has all of the information that i told you i mean the cell id the frequency and i mean the uh, i don't know scheduling whatsoever whatsoever you can imagine and these are the things that a ue needs to send the attach request or to the random access and do the connection towards the new uh in ID. and after that look now it is an uplink channel uh, from the UE towards the new inner B. Here on the last measurement it was 312 and it said uh, the situation or the condition with the cell ID number 23 is good so the previous serving uh, inner B made the decision based on the report sends the information and now we have the connection towards the new cell ID or the new inner B. And this is the place that handover happened. And look, we have handover. Handover and success. So uh, now by uh, I don't know, taking a look at the packets, the whatever captured, maybe you have better, maybe we have better understanding on that. And after that, the, the first thing is master information block, uh, the cell ID and the things. You know, we, we uh, first receive a mass information block and a service information block number one, which has a scheduling or timing for service information block number two, number two, and the rest of them. So we have the connection to the new NLD. And as uh, it is a service based architecture and LT, and it is important to have the continuity of service to, and to keep the service uh, agile, to keep the service alive. So the new NLD will ask you to do. The measurement again and again and again. Look here, it said, okay, it is the time, do the measurement configuration and the rest of the things. So, anyway, it was the thing that I wanted to tell you. I hope I was able to, I don't know, uh, shed light on a handover on uh, A3 events, on the mobility of the cell. And I hope you enjoyed. I hope it was good for you. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Bye, everyone.